And uh, then we're going to, that's like a little springboard here tonight. And then we're going to go to several others. I do want you to keep your Bibles open, please, just for a few minutes. Because we're going to talk about the worst kind of deceit. And that is you deceiving your own self. Deceiving yourself. Uh, how does a person deceive their self? Psychiatrists and psychologists say, everything they say is not right, but this is what they say. They deal with people all the time that are messed up. And they say the hardest person to help is somebody who won't be honest with their self. And uh, that's true. That's true. I agree with that. It's hard to help somebody if they're always putting the blame on everything and everybody else and not taking their own responsibility for their own mess. And so tonight here in 1 John 1, 8, the Bible said if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I hate to be tricked. I hate for somebody to trick me. Don't that make you mad when somebody burns you, a blister, takes advantage of your trust, tricks you? We've all had that done to us. I hate for the devil to trick me. That's happened many, many times. But I tell you, the, the dumbest thing on that list is you doing it to yourself, deceiving yourself. And so I want to just give you this list here tonight, and please keep your Bible open. Just leave it there in your lap, and we're going to flip to a few more verses while we're doing this. Number one is this one. If we say we have no sin, all unrighteousness is sin, people. We are nothing. Now, uh, it didn't say, it didn't say if we say we don't sin. It said we say we have none. You have sin inside you, a sin nature. Sometimes I've got, I've got down and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I said, God, Take everything wrong out of me, God. I don't want no, because that's what hurt, it ruins our bodies. It brings uh, sickness and eventually death. And I said, God, cleanse me just like pour Clorox in me or something, Lord, uh, and the, the blood of Jesus, and cleanse me. And he said, I've done it. And I can, in my mind, I picture that little seed of sin is still in me. And you've got it, and I've got it. And that's exactly why these bodies will someday die. Uh, the wages of sin is death. You meet these people that say they don't ever sin, um, they're deceiving themselves. A person who says, I've arrived and I've got up here on this level. I uh, said, so this preacher was out with this uh, church preacher one time and he was driving down the road and him and the uh, pastor and this preacher and uh, the guy was preaching revival and he had his wife and daughter was in the back seat and uh, the, the daddy, uh, the preacher told the visiting evangelist, he said, yes, yeah, since I got sanctified, I, I hadn't sinned. I hadn't sinned in like 12 years. And he said, really? And uh, he said, my wife hadn't sinned in like 10 or 11 years. And, uh, and the girl, the teenage girl in the back seat, like, said, daddy. You know, I mean, she, he deceived himself. He didn't have that kid fooled. And you ain't got yours fooled. I ain't got mine fooled. Uh, if, you if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you have the sin nature inside you that can respond to sin out here in the world. That's why you have to keep it. I always picture it like Roundup. You spray, you spray weed killer on weed to keep it down, keep it down. And you have to continually put the Word of God, the blood of Jesus in your heart and mind to keep that sin nature down or it will take over, just like weeds take over your house and land and, and garden and, and life. And so uh, there, there, we've got it. We've got it all in us. We have a sin nature, and you deceive yourself if you ever start telling you. I don't think nobody in here believes that. So uh, we'll move on. Number two, take your Bible and turn to Galatians chapter 6. Now, I told you we'd be turning to some verses here. So look here at Galatians chapter number 6 here tonight. And let's do just a little short Bible study. One little quick verse here, and then we'll give you some more. Galatians chapter number 6. And look at verse number three. Here's another way that a person deceives their self. Look at verse number three. Uh, Galatians 6, 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, 
he deceiveth himself. My, that's why people don't like the Bible. The Bible says that Einstein was nothing. The Bible said, I mean, look what a great contribution he made to the world, the atomic bomb. Uh, uh, listen, uh, the Bible says that the greatest men on earth, high positions, pastors, preachers, mamas, daddies, saintly old grandma, the Bible said they are nothing. If a man thinks he's something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the worst uh, beliefs of our day is people people uh, have this uh, uh, thing of I'm special and I'm awesome and God made me and and that's by the way that's one of the the arguments that atheists laugh at us about you know they laugh at us because they got some more common sense than some Christians they laugh at us say you crazy people you believe we're created in God's image what about people's got a lot of stuff wrong with them and everything and they don't understand the scripture the truth is we are not created in God's image Adam was. Adam was creating God's image and then Eve was perfect. Then they fell and then they got a sinful nature and Adam begot sons after his own image in his fallen nature. You surely don't think God has flaws in it like we do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are, we are fallen examples of what God made in his image, Adam. As a matter of fact, we wasn't even created. We were born. Uh, Adam was created and Eve was created. The rest of us was born. And we was born fallen creatures and we was born with a fallen nature. And I hear that all the time. People always say, say, well, aren't we all in God's image? No, we're not. We lost that image back in the Garden of Eden. Jesus Christ had it. He is the image of God, the Bible said. And one day when we see him and get, a, get our new body, we'll have that image right and it'll be back again. But right now, now, we ain't much to look at. We ain't much to fool with. Bible said when a man thinks he's something, he is nothing. You are born depraved. Are you listening to me? Uh, you say, well, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. I understand that. We are. Even in our fallen condition. We have eyes, we have ears, we have a mind and all that. But we are not nowhere near perfect like God is. Uh, the world teaches believe in yourself. The Bible teaches without me you can do nothing. The world teaches you can do anything you set your mind to. The Bible teaches in Romans seven eighteen, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So tonight, uh, the, best, the best attitude you can have is, Lord, I'm nothing, and I know I ain't worth shooting, and I ain't no camp. God, if you'll help me, I'll do right and help me to do the best I can. That's your best attitude. Stay low. Don't ever start thinking you're up here somewhere. Uh, you're getting ready to go down if you get that attitude. So when you think yourself something and you're nothing, number three, take your Bible, turn to James chapter 1. James chapter number one. Let's look at this one. I'll show you something here tonight. Uh, Hebrews, James. Uh, uh, and we'll look at James chapter number, uh, let's see, five maybe, somewhere along in there. Uh, James chapter one, I'm sorry. James chapter one. And look at verse uh, number 26. James chapter one, verse number 26. He said, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. What's that verse said? That verse says, if you dress right, appear to be right, go to the right places, don't go to the wrong places, don't wear short skirts, don't get out in public showing your nakedness. Don't cuss. Don't do that. But you can't keep your mouth shut about everybody else in the church and everybody else in any other church. Then you deceive yourself. You are not right with God. You are not right with God. You are not right with God. You are just as much messed up as a drunk uh, that messes up his life. Amen, Brother Danny. Preach it right there. It's amazing how we point our fingers and say, oh, these good for nothing people, look at them going to the lake on Sunday. Look at them going to the golf course. Sorry, things ought to be in church. And as soon as we get home, we say, did you see what she said? And I heard what she said, and I heard what she said. And then call everybody and say, well, I heard this, and I heard that, and I heard that. The Bible said if you claim to be religious and 
can't keep your tongue under control, you're, you're wasting your time. You're deceiving yourself. You're not right with God. You need a trip to the altar. Then you need to get in the shut up ministry, brother. I mean, you need to get in there and say, Lord, help me to keep my mouth shut. And, and, it, and it's so tempting. I've been doing this a long time. I've done this myself and I've heard thousands of people doing it. Then I don't mean to be gossiping, but the truth's the truth, preacher. I don't mean to be talking about nobody. And, and somehow or another we feel like it makes us feel better to put down other people in the church. I think some preachers, I've been out with preachers, and they just talked about everybody like as a dog. And I'm sitting there saying, how do they think this is right? And they think, well, because we're in the ministry and we're not really gossiping, we're just discussing problems uh, that are in our church. And uh, if you're not real careful, there's a fine line. There's a fine line between prayer requests and gossiping. Fine line. I can I'd say now, now, Jeremy, I need you to, I need you to pray for somebody. And, and, and this somebody's in our church, and, and it's bad. It's bad. I, I don't don't tell me to say who. I'm not at liberty to say who. You know that's what they say. Sound real spiritual? I'm, I'm not. I, I can't say who. And you say, well, we, well I'm, I I don't know, but but you know them, and uh, uh, you know, and, and and they sit near you, and uh, I'm not, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. But they got two kids, and they, and the da 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 da, you know, and and leave, and for, they're just. Dying to tell. Have you ever had somebody come up to you know, and you can tell they're just dying to tell you something? Just dying. You got them at work, don't you? Where you work, don't you got people that come up there and say, well, let me tell you what I heard. I heard the boss just give her a raise because she's flirting with him the other day. And I, mean, I, and, and I heard this and I heard that. I heard so and so is about ready to get fired and all that. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says about you. The Bible said you are deceiving yourself. You think you're right with God. Amen. And, and, and all of us are guilty, me included. Amen. We all have caught ourselves saying. Have you ever caught yourself saying something and right when you say it, you think, shouldn't have said that. That's gossip. And then you go ahead and say, I have. I admit it, man. I've done it lots of times. And I say, Lord, I'm sorry. And then something says, well, that's not really gossip. And something says, yes, it really is too. And the Holy Ghost says, wrong, Danny. It's wrong. And I'm telling you tonight, uh, you deceive yourself when you think you're right but can't keep your mouth shut. Number four. Let's move along here tonight. First Corinthians chapter 15. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and let me show you another one here tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Everybody should know this verse. And it says this, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. And it says this, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That means this. When you think bad company, listen to me young people, listen to me mothers, listen to me adults, when you think bad company won't affect you and won't hurt you, you are deceiving yourself. That means it. Kids, kids, listen to me. You went to camp. You got right with God. The Lord touched your life. You got on fire for the Lord. You come back and said, man, I'm going to do everything, everything right. I'm going to serve God. And then that Friday night, some of your friends say, let's go to the movies. And you say, uh, what's playing? And then it's a movie you know that you know, you know you don't need to be watching. Uh, but some say, oh, it's no big deal. My goodness, I've been in church all week. I've been serving the Lord. It's my friends. I'll just go because it's them. And you sort of blame it on them. Like they talked me into it. You know what that Bible said? That Bible said, don't be deceived. You you can't hang around bad company and it not rub off on you. You are, you are lying to yourself. If you think you can go out with a bunch of boys, listen to me, young man, listen to me. If you think you can go out with a bunch of boys that are cussing and taking God's name in vain and, and, and doing wrong and listening to bad music, you say, well, the Lord knows I'm trying to do right, so it don't bother me. It, it will bother you. You can't go out and rain without getting wet. You can't jump in a pool without it getting on you. You can't hang around junk without that junk getting on you. So that girl that time, many times, years ago, she came to her daddy and she said, Daddy, can I go to the, uh, the dance at school? And he said, no, you're not going. She said, but Daddy, why, I'm a Christian and I'm going to do right. I'm not going to be doing the wrong thing. And he said, no, you're not going. Got no business going there. 
And she said, Daddy, he said, ain't them people there, some of them living around? She said, yes, they are, but it, it's not going to affect me. He said, go over and get me a, a coal off of that fireplace. And she went over there and picked it up and said, see there, it's, it's coal. It, it, it didn't hurt me. He said, put it back down. She put it back down. He said, now look at your hand. It's black all over. He said, that's what bad company will do. Smut you every time. Every time. I can't. You can't. I'll be honest with you. Maybe y'all are great, wonderful, spiritual giants. Maybe y'all have attained a spiritual level that I've never made it to. But I'll be, I'm going to give you an honest confession tonight. I can't go out there in this world. I can't. I've been saved 40 something years. I can't go at uh, Gatlinburg, anywhere, whatever, and, and not feel that it gets on you. It gets on that spirit of the world of happy and everything's fine and there's no problems and that that music. I don't know. Maybe y'all are more spiritual than me. It bothers me. It bothers me. Hey, can I get some help from you men here tonight? Are, are you going to sit there and tell me the way people dress out there don't bother you? Yes, it does if you're a red-blooded male. And if it don't, you need to go to the doctor bad. Or you need to ask God to get the you-know-what out of you. Amen, brother. There's something wrong with you, but I'm telling you, this world, get off on you. And ain't none of us too spiritual that it won't get on you. You gotta do right. You gotta keep your mind on God. You gotta keep your eyes straight ahead. When that other guy at work's flirting with you, ladies, when that man's flirting with you and you know it ain't right, you know it ain't right, you know it ain't right, and you say, well, just a little bit, I'm, I'm lonely and, and, just a little, and I'm tired and he's just a friend. You're playing with something that's gonna get on you. You're playing with something that's gonna get on you. There's, there's women right here that are not here tonight because they thought they could hang around with a man that wasn't right with God and they're out of church tonight because they thought they could get by with it and you can't get by with it. Nobody can. Number five, James chapter one again. James chapter one. Let's get this one right quick. James chapter number one. James chapter one again, right after Hebrews there and look at chapter one of the book of James. Here he said this, verse 22, I believe. James 1, 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. You deceive yourself when you come to church every Sunday and listen to the word of God and don't do one blessed thing about it. You're deceiving yourself. You think you're living right, Here's, here's the problem. I mean, I grew up in this part of the country. I love it. To me, this is the best part of the, our, the, best part of the best country is right here in, in North Carolina. I, I don't want to move nowhere, and I'm, I'm thankful for where God allowed us to live. I'm not trying to find fault, but there are thousands and thousands of churches across the south here of people that come to church every Sunday. You couldn't get them drunk with a million dollars. You ain't no way you can get them to cheat on their spouse. There ain't no way you could get them to go rob a bank or get into crime, but they won't hit a lick for God. They wouldn't knock on their neighbor's door for a million dollars cash. They wouldn't witness. They wouldn't fast. They're hearers of the word, but not doers. I'm gonna tell you something tonight. You've heard me say it a million times. You are not living the Christian life because you don't do a bunch of stuff. There's people laying in the hospital tonight in a coma that don't cuss and don't drink and don't watch dirty movies and don't uh, go to the bar and don't commit adultery. They don't do nothing. That ain't the Christian life. That's part of it. The Christian life is not just not doing some stuff. It's doing some stuff. He said, if you're here of the word and not a doer of the word, you deceive yourself. So I'm kidding myself if I think I'm living right and I'm not doing what I hear preached from the Word of God. Now we're doing all kinds of things about that. And, and y'all's problem is just like everybody else's problem. You all think somebody else. Like what I said about the choir a minute ago. Get up here in the choir. You know why you don't get in the choir? Because you think somebody else will. And, and the first thing you know, everybody thinks, if, if, you, if you're if you supposed to be in the choir and don't get in the choir, you are either feeling guilty because you've been sinning or you were there. I have people tell me all the time, I got a sore throat. And I said, that has nothing to do with it at all. Sore throat means nothing. 
What do you think I do when I got a sore throat? Just stand up here and make us look better. Anything looks better than an empty choir. Even we can't sing a lick. I'm telling you tonight, brother, you deceive yourself when you make excuses for what you don't want to do and not serve God. Listen to me, people. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. Or you're too cool, I reckon. Some of y'all are too cool. Uh, I don't think you're that cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you think, uh, you think you don't, you listen, but don't heed the Bible. Let me show you another one. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to wind it up here in a minute. Galatians chapter number 6. Look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians. Chapter number 6. Uh, look at uh, verse number 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Look at Galatians 6, 7. Everybody looking at it? Be not deceived. You're going to deceive yourself again. God's not. You don't mock God. You don't mock God. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You sow corn, you're going to reap corn. You sow grass seed, you're going to reap grass. If you sow watermelon seed, you're going to get watermelon. If you sow... uh, uh, onions, you're going to get onions. If you sow tomato, put tomato plants in, you're going to get tomatoes. That's what it says, a simple truth. That's one of God's great laws of nature. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You cannot sow dirtiness on your phone and in your brain and expect to reap good life and good things and good thoughts and good habits. It's impossible. It cannot be done. Just like you can't, just like you can't sow potatoes and pray for, for uh, watermelons. You, you can't do it. People sow bad stuff all the time and then say, oh, Lord, please, God, oh, Lord, please. Don't. Well, you're wasting your time. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you also reap. Uh, you sow to the flesh. You'll reap the flesh. Hey, listen to me. Hear the word of God. Save yourself some trouble. Sow the right thing. Let me give you this list. Here, young people, listen. You cannot sow bad habits and reap a good character. You cannot sow hatred and reap love. You cannot sow wicked thoughts and reap a clean life. You cannot sow crime and reap freedom. You cannot sow uh, alcohol and reap drugs and alcohol and reap a healthy body or a clean mind. There are thousands, thousands, thousands. Got a text one yesterday, seen one yes every day. Every day we all see them. Our country's going broke because of people on drugs. It's drugs, drugs everywhere you look. Everybody's on drugs. Everybody's on drugs. And you know what every one of them think? Every one of them think, I can handle this. It don't buy. I'm not going to get like these other people. I'm just going to do a little bit, get a little high and enjoy it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You hear me? You that think you're so smart, you think you're smart, don't you? You think I can just keep I keep beer in the refrigerator and I keep there and I know I ain't hurting nothing else. Yeah, you just think it's not. That book says you can't sow it without reaping it. You say, oh man told me that they drunk wine in the Bible. Yeah, and you listen to a fool too is what you done. That man's looking for excuse to sin. First of all, there's two kinds of wine in the Bible. One's fermented and one's not. And second, the one that was fermented, you'd have to drink a gallon of it to get a high off of. It ain't like what we got nowadays. And I'm telling you tonight, you're, you're, you're messing up your life of drugs and alcohol. I preach it all the time. We've got so many young people in our church. I tell them, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I don't know, I hope you all appreciate me doing that. If I had young people in here tonight, I'd say, let it rip, preacher. You can't preach it too hard for my kids. Listen, I brought a beer can in the pulpit one time and I got it up and I said, this is the devil. And I jumped on it and stomped it like that and kicked it down and a young preacher jumped up on the front row and kicked it and it hit the wall like a bullet and everybody went, bam, and they never forgot that. It's devil's juice. It's devil's juice. Nothing good ever come out of it. Nothing good's ever been helped by it. And when Paul told Timothy to drink a little wine, it was a medicine. For a sickness. That ain't your medicine, it's your sickness. 
You cannot sow crooked deals and reap a successful business, especially in a little town like this. You cannot sow self-indulgence and not show it on your face. You cannot sow disloyalty and reap loyalty. You cannot sow dishonesty and reap integrity. You cannot sow profanity and reap a clean speech. You cannot sow disrespect and reap respect. You cannot sow deception and reap confidence. You cannot sow untidiness and reap neatness. You cannot sow unrestraint and reap temperance. You cannot sow laziness and reap a good living. You cannot sow cruelty and reap uh, 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 kindness. You cannot sow cowardice and reap courage. You cannot sow uh, destruction and reap protection. You cannot sow greed and reap generosity. You cannot sow neglect of church and resist temptation. You cannot sow neglect of the Bible and reap a well-guided life. You cannot sow thorns and expect roses. You can't sow hell and expect to reap heaven. Deceiving yourself. Our generation's gone bad. I just heard about yesterday this guy that that accused billionaire sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. You heard about that guy? They found him dead in that cell yesterday morning. And big, big names are connected to his what they call pedophile island where they flew them big, big rich people down there to have underage girls. And that was getting ready to blow sky high and they found him dead in jail yesterday morning and I don't, I don't even have an opinion on that. I, I really don't. I, there's no telling. I know rumors are circulating all over that, that big, big, big names have people somebody like that. That man sowed to the flesh a long time ago and he reaped it. I hope he's in heaven but it don't sound good for him. They say he hung himself in his jail cell. That's what sowing a lifestyle of sin will get you to. I seen him the other day on bus route, and he was just like this, sitting on the step. How you doing, buddy? All right. Well, you know who Jesus is? Yeah. Bound. It's like demons had him bound. And I thought that he's like a, a he's like a, uh, an animal that's caged up. And the devil had his chain wrapped around. Let me tell you what sin will do. They say they took that man, took a little string like that and wrapped it around his fingers and he can break it. Took it around there two or three times. I said, if you keep wrapping that thing around there like, like that, the strongest man in the world can't break it. And that's the way sin is. It starts out little and it starts winding around you. And if you don't think, if you don't think you can become a drug addict on the side of the road, you keep playing with it and watch what happens. Finally, I'm done. This is Numbers chapter 32. Take your Bible and turn to Numbers 32. And I've already said this, so I'll just comment on it and I'm through. Numbers chapter 32, you know the, the story, the verse here. And that is, you think you won't pay for sin. You, you deceive yourself when you think you won't pay for sin. Numbers chapter 32. Look at it with me if you don't mind. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Deceive yourself when you think you ain't going to pay for sin. David did. David was a man after God's own heart. And God loved David. God gave David a special covenant. But he did not let him get by with sinning. Samson did. Solomon did. The wicked kings did. Jonah did. And be sure, you will too. I, you know, the definition of insanity is what they say is doing the same thing over and over and over and over expecting a different result. 
And I feel like tonight, God has put his finger on something that you're doing. Maybe here in here tonight that you need to fix. And if you get it fixed, this is an easy way. Take the word of God, get in the altar, fix it. That's the easy way. The hard way is keep doing it. Do it until he has to smack you. And when he smacks you, he's going to smack. He can smack hard. And he'll, he'll do you a favor when he does. But get it fixed the easy way with a simple rebuke like I've given you tonight. Don't deceive yourself. You're not that smart. I'm not either. The Lord got my attention many, many, many years ago. He said, Danny, I love you. I gave my son for you. I died for you. I love you with an everlasting love. But you're not going to do wrong and get away with it. And I'm not, and you ain't either. The quicker you get to through your noggin, the better off you will be. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Miss Desi's going to come and play. There's nobody here but us and the Lord and the devil. I wonder how many of you here tonight will just slip right out of your seat, meet me down here at this altar while she plays softly, and deal whatever God's speaking to you about. There ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Every one of us needs to be in here. Amen. Amen. Young people, teenagers, mamas, dad, you've been doing wrong, been doing something wrong. You think you're going to get by with it? You ain't. The Lord will knock you down. The Lord will knock you down. Best thing for you to do is quit. Quit. Quit it. Quit it. You're doing something you ain't supposed to? Best thing for you to do is quit, friend. Quit it. Repent. That's what the Bible calls it. Quit. Heavenly Father, do what ought to be done right now. I pray, God, that every one of us, every one of us here tonight, Lord, would not deceive ourselves. Help us, oh God, we ask. Do what ought to be done in every heart and every life. We'll thank you for it. I pray that you bless every person here tonight on the altar. Lord, God, give every one of us grace to do that that you'd be pleased with in our lives. Have your way here tonight. Do what ought to be done. We'll thank you and praise you for it. God, I pray, Lord, that our church will be uh, pure. Lord, that you get the sin out of us, out of me, out of us. All of it, anything, wickedness about us, Lord. Get it out of our hearts and lives. Help us to live for you and serve you and do the right thing. We'll thank you for it. Bless these on the altar tonight. Whatever the need is in their life, I pray you'd meet it. Bless our church. Bless everybody as we go uh, our separate ways tonight and get ready for Bible school tomorrow night. I pray the Holy Spirit would get in this thing. Use it for your glory. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Still praying tonight. We'll wait just a few seconds. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The best rebuke you can get is through preaching. And then if you don't listen, the Lord has to do something a little stronger. All right, listen. We're going to have